Analyzing the length of a company's operating cycle and its cash conversion cycle is very helpful, not just in terms of analyzing business performance and understanding how quickly the company sells its inventory and collects cash from customers, but also in terms of understanding the extent to which this company is going to need to rely on short-term borrowing to finance purchases of its inventory. But first, let me show you how these are calculated. Let's start with the operating cycle. The operating cycle is just the sum of the days to sell inventory and day sales outstanding. If you remember, day sales outstanding is how long it takes the company to collect a credit sale that it made to a customer. So if they sell to a customer, they bill the customer, and the customer pays 28 days later, that would be day sales outstanding. Okay, so you add these two together, the operating cycle is telling you, here's the number of days it takes this company to sell the inventory and then get cash from the customer. So if this was 56, right, if that was the length of the operating cycle, that means it takes this company 56 days to sell the inventory, build the customer and get cash from the customer. Okay, so this is the number of days it takes to convert the inventory to cash, not just to sell the inventory, but to actually turn the inventory into cash. So you could think about that. Also, the operating cycle is the total number of days that this company needs to finance its inventory, okay? Because when they get the inventory, they don't immediately convert it to cash. They have to sell the inventory, and then they have to build a customer and get the cash from the customer. So the operating, so in this case, it'd be 56 days before they're gonna get any cash from the customer, so they need to somehow finance that inventory that time period. Now, here's where days payable outstanding comes into the picture. And this is going to get into the cash conversion cycle. Days payable outstanding. If we take that, and remember, that's just the number of days it takes this company to pay its suppliers. If we take that and subtract it, okay, from the operating cycle. So we've got the operating cycle, which is, again, just the sum of days, sales, uh, days of sell inventory and day sales outstanding. So if we take the operating cycle and then subtract days payable outstanding, that will give us the cash conversion cycle, which is, is sometimes people call it the cash to cash cycle, cash operating cycle. They're all, all referring to the same thing. So why is it that this cash conversion cycle, we're subtracting days payable outstanding, and what are we doing here? Here's the intuition, okay? So hopefully this, this little equation will be helpful to you. Let me, let me walk you through it. So the operating cycle says, okay, look, it's going to be 56 days before we get cash from the customer, okay? We've got to sell the inventory. we got to collect the cash. Now, the question is, how are we going to finance the inventory during that 56 days? What are we going to do? How are we going to get the cash for this? So, days payable outstanding, you could think about that as this is really financing that is being provided by suppliers. Why? Because your suppliers are not demanding cash immediately for the inventory. OK, so to the extent that they are not demanding cash immediately, let, let's just say, for example, the days payable outstanding was 27. Okay, So now you subtract that from the 56 from the operating cycle. OK, so what does that come out to? Uh, my math looks like 29. OK, so that would be the cash conversion cycle. So that means that basically the supplier is saying, look, for 27 days, we'll finance the inventory. Like, we got you. We got you for 27 days. But at 27 days, you got to pay, at, you know, after 27 days, you got to pay that supplier. But you still haven't got the cash from the customer yet. Okay, You still have another 29 days before you're going to get the cash from the customer. So the supplier, right, they took care of 27 days in this hypothetical example. But the entire operating cycle is 56. You still don't have the cash from the customer. So the remaining 29 days, that's the days that are requiring other financing. Okay, and that's what the cash conversion cycle is measuring. This is days requiring other financing. So basically, what is this? The higher the higher this is, is so 29 in this case, but let's say it went to 35, it went to 42, let's say it was going up over time. That's not good for the company, right? That's not good. The company wants this to be lower, right? You, you want it to be lower because the, long, the higher this number is, this cash conversion cycle, the higher that number is, that means that the company's having to, more and more days that they have to find other financing. Financing not from the supplier, but somebody else. So who would be that somebody else? Well, that's where they might have to engage in short-term borrowing. Okay, They're having to borrow money because they're having to pay that supplier even though, so it's been 27 days, they have not got the cash yet. It's going to be 56 days before they get the cash from the customer. Okay, so they're having to engage in short-term borrowing. So even if you, if you have a great company and they're doing well and they're sell, selling product, but they could have a cash crunch, 
because of this issue here. If they haven't uh, pr properly managed their cash, right, and their cash conversion cycle is increasing, uh, and, and for some reason the company can't access uh, short-term credit, could lead to a problem. So let's take a look at uh, some numbers for actual companies. So I've got uh, a couple. So Kimberly Clark here and Colgate Palmolive. Um, so I just felt I just in the mood for consumer products companies today, I guess. So uh, they both make uh, products like the like Kimberly Clark uh, makes huggies and you know some diapers and Colgate Palmolive. Colgate makes toothpaste other products so these are both consumer products companies hey and day sales outstanding day sell inventory days payable outstanding i've already calculated these okay this is for 2020 uh, fiscal year and so now i went and i calculated the operating cycle and cash conversion cycle for each of these companies so we could compare them so you see you just add day sales outstanding and days to sell inventory that's 98 so basically kimberly clark it so they make let's say some paper towels Okay, so they make some paper towels and they're going to sell them to Walmart. So it takes them 55 days to sell their inventory, but then 43 days to collect the cash from, from Walmart or whoever. So 98 days is their operating cycle. However, their days payable outstanding, 94. Okay, 94. So basically, their suppliers are providing nearly all the financing. They only so they don't have to pay those suppliers until 94 days later. So basically, they only have to cover four days, at least in 2020, right? They only had to cover four days in terms of getting some short term borrowing or something like that. So basically, it's like, look, yeah, it takes us 98 days to get cash from customers, but for 94 of the days, we don't even have to pay the supplier. So we only get to borrow to be able to cover that four days. Now, Colgate Palmolive, on the other hand, so their operating cycle, 117 days. So that's to, again, to sell the inventory and collect the cash from customers. But then when we subtract the days payable outstanding of 71, okay, so we get the 117 minus 71. That's where, that's where I'm getting this number from. I hope you got that. So 46 days. So they have to figure out 46 days of financing. Basically, they're like, look, hey, the, the supplier wants to be paid. And we're like, uh, well, we don't have the money from the customer yet. So they have to rely on short-term borrowing or some other financing to be able to cover those 46 days until they get the cash from the customer.